Hi YouTube, today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be investigating the solubility of a solid in water. The solid that we're going to be choosing is potassium nitrate. This is a procedure that we can use to measure the solubility of potassium nitrate in water at 40 degrees. We're going to use 40 degrees today. Enjoy the video and I hope you learn something more about solubility. This is the potassium nitrate and it appears as a white powder like this. It's an oxidizing agent so we have to store it in a place that's quite far away from where all of the other chemicals that we store are. So it may intensify fire, as it says. It's an oxidizer, so we have to be a bit careful with this. And we have to keep it and store it away from clothing or any other incombustible materials. So we've got some distal water here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up to 40 degrees, but I'm going to go a little bit over. Then I'm going to be adding some of the potassium nitrate. I'm going to be adding enough of the potassium nitrate for it to dissolve and form a saturated solution. I'll know I've got a saturated solution because the crystals will not dissolve any further. If the temperature of this goes below 40, I'll just heat it again gently to raise the temperature above 40 degrees and I'll keep going until I've got my saturated solution. So at the moment it's rising quite quickly, it's uh, around about 25 now, uh, 30 degrees Celsius. And this boiling tube rises pretty rapidly to 40 and now when it's hit 45 I'm going to take it off the heat. So now it's, uh, it's roughly 55 uh, degrees. And what I'm now going to do is I'm going to add the potassium nitrate. Just throw it in there. Now, you just have to be careful because sometimes there's condensation that uh, uh, forms over here. And this is the distilled water. Um, and the actual crystals will stick to the side. But what I'll try and do is I'll try and uh, push the crystals in as much as possible. When I'm doing the next stage, I don't want any of those solid uh, parts to uh, be transferred into the evaporating basin. So I'll just do this. I'll keep doing this until one of two things happens. Either the temperature goes below 40. I'm not expecting a chemical reaction, it's just dissolving. So it's staying around about maybe just between 45 and 50 degrees. So I'll keep on adding. But if it does go below 40 degrees centigrade, I will heat it again. Now I'm hoping that, I don't have to heat it again. I'm hoping that it will just uh, very quickly form a saturated solution. I'll give it a stir. You can see that it's, it's actually dissolving. So I'll need to add uh, a little more. I'll keep doing this until I've got a saturated solution. So uh, we have reached a stage where it looks as if there's a saturated solution now, but uh, the temperature is now down to 30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this up again and uh, see whether we, we can progress on. If, it's, if it stays like this with the solid at the bottom and it reaches 40, then we know that we have a saturated solution and we can carry on to the next stage. So I'm just gonna heat this up again. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off the heat as soon as it hits uh, 40. And if there are still crystals, then I know I've got my saturated solution. You can hear people going between lessons in the background. This is a live school, of course. Okay, so stirring it. Now, if I do go above 40 degrees centigrade, uh, I'll allow it to cool before I move on to the next stage. So it's reaching, it's reaching 40, 41 at the moment, and now I'm just going to take it off the heat I'm just gonna wait until this hits uh, 40 degrees. So to get the, uh, get any solid from the walls of the inside of this boiling tube, 
I'm using this technique. So I'm just holding it at an angle and then just swirling the, uh, the solution so it gathers as much of the uh, solid on the sides as possible. I'm just waiting a few minutes, uh, a few moments while this cools down. This is around about 42 degrees and we can actually now start to see at the uh, bottom of the tube there are a small number of crystals. If I give it a quick stir you'll be able to see them. So I do, I've just about achieved a saturated solution now. I'll add maybe one more spatula just to be on the safe side. I do want it to be saturated. I do want my results to be accurate. It's at 42 degrees right now. Does not seem to be dissolving any more, any more solid. There's definitely something that's at the bottom of that. Okay, so that's not dissolving anymore. I'm going to go with that as being my saturated solution it's at 42 degrees now while i wait until it goes down to 40 degrees i'm going to pre-weigh this evaporating basin and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to slowly pour some of this liquid into here so some of this saturated solution is going to go directly in there so this will help me measure the solubility of this potassium nitrate at 40 degrees centigrade at 40 degrees, that's the moment where I need to pour it from here to here. So here is my empty evaporating basin. I'm going to record the mass of that now. And the mass of that is coming out to be 19.33 uh, uh, grams. So I'm now going to record that. 19.33 grams. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some of this saturated solution uh, to uh, the evaporating basin. Prepare myself, make sure that I don't transfer any of the solid, so make sure that it's the, the run is clear. And it is now it is now precisely 40, so I'm now going to transfer the solution. You don't have to transfer all of it, but the larger the amount you transfer, the more accurate it is. So the mass of this is working out to be 31.08, and I'm now going to uh, record that down. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, water bath to heat the evaporating basin. And that will enable me to drive off the, the solvent. And once the solvent goes, what I'll be left with is the solute and the evaporating basin. So I'll be able to use that uh, mass once it's cooled down uh, to work out the mass of the solvent that was in my uh, sample. And then what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to work out the mass of the solute that was originally in the sample. And I'll then be able to scale that up so that I have a value of uh, grams of solute that were dissolved in 100 grams of solvent, if I scale it up. Now, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to take two measurements of the, uh, the, the mass. I'm going to heat the evaporating basin after I've uh, measured it. I'm going to do it again. And this is to make sure that all of the water has indeed evaporated. Uh, this process is called heating to constant mass. Uh, this is what it looks like at the halfway stage. You can see some of the solid is forming at the side and the solvent has partially evaporated. We're just going to leave it for now and we'll come back to it. This is nicely cooled down, uh, but 
we can't just weigh it straight away. What we're going to do is, we're going to put it on some paper towel uh, because there will be some condensation at the bottom. And if we don't account for that, our measurements will be a little bit off. So just check to make sure that it is cool enough to touch as it, it is indeed. So I'm just going to, there's the condensation that was at the bottom. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure this mass and then I'm going to reheat it again. So this is 24.582 grams. I'm just going to top this up with a little bit of water that I'm using and recycling. 24.579, so that's going to be 24.58. We'll pop that back on there and I'm just going to heat it again. So this is cooled down now. This is the second time it's cooled down. So I've just blotted the uh, any extra water off. I'm just going to now move it over here. Just tar that. Just reset that. Now, oh, there we go. It's all ready. And this is now 24.31. Eight. Okay, so that's 24.32. So it's not gone down by much. I'm going to do it one more time just to see whether I can actually get constant mass. If it stays at uh, maybe 24.3, I'll, I'll know that I've done it correctly. Okay, so, oh, here we go. Hold on a second, it's 24.32. Yeah, there we go. Back to the, back to the water path we go of truth and I measure the mass if it's insignificant we will stop all right okay 24.312 and our previous one was 24.32 so it's pretty much uh, where it where I can suggest it is constant so it's 24.31 so that's the third time so that's the mass of the evaporating basin and the solute after heating, and that's the third one. This is pretty much constant, given the accuracy of our uh, balance. Here's a fun bit. Here's where we do the calculation. So the mass of the evaporating basin was 19.33. And when we put the solution in, it was 31.08. And then the mass of the evaporating basin and the solute after heating was 24.31 we're going to go for the, our final one okay so 24.31 now a little bit of uh maths here so we've got my calculator and we're going to have a look so 24 where we go 24.31 uh take away 19.33 now that is going to give me 4.98. Now that is the difference between the mass of the evaporating basin and the solute after heating and the mass of the empty basin. So 4.98 grams is actually equal to the mass of the solute. And remember that the mass of the solute was potassium nitrate, okay? So 4.98. Now, if we go back to our uh, value that we had here, where the solute was actually in the solvent forming the solution, that's 31.08. So 31.08 will actually give us a value of what the solution was. There's two actual ways of doing this, but I'm going to do this in a slightly clear way. So 31.08 take away 19.33 actually gives me 11.75 now 11.75 is equal to the mass of the solution now if i take away the 4.98 from that i will have the mass of the water so 11.75 take away 4.98 6.77 grams equals the mass of the water used so if i had one gram of water if i had one gram of water 
How much solute would actually dissolve in one gram of water to make a saturated solution at 40 degrees centigrade? Well, the answer is that it is obtained by dividing this value over here by 6.77. So if uh, 4.98 grams of the solute dissolves in 6.77 grams of water, then I have to divide both values by 6.77 equals 0.00 gram of water to find out how much solute actually dissolves in one gram of water. So 4.98 divided by 6.77 gives me 8 divided by 6.77 gives me uh, 0 0.7355. So that is effectively uh, 0 0.7356 grams. Now, all I need to do now is express it as the number of grams per 100 grams of water. Well, 100 grams of water is 100 times that. So the number of grams which will go into 100 grams of water is 100 times that. So if I multiply that by 100, I then work out my final answer to be 73.56 grams per 100 grams of water. Now I have worked out the solubility of the potassium nitrate at 40 degrees and that's it so there you go that's an incredible amount of work that i had to do for just one data point and what you would have to do in order to get uh, enough results to analyze is you would have to do that experiment at uh, several different temperatures maybe 40 degrees 50 60 70 and then work out what your what your actual solubility is at each and every single uh, temperature and then what you could do is you could draw up a graph where you have the temperature as your x-axis that's the independent variable and then you would have the value of the solubility in grams per 100 grams of water on your y-axis and that then would be something that you could then go on to analyze hopefully if you do that type of graph you would find that as the temperature increases the solubility increases thank you very much for watching i hope you learned a little more about solubility today